abundance here because of the Thames. It brought people here as a source of food and water and it allowed the thing that caused London to grow and flourish, trade. The first object in the history of London is an Elizabethan seal made from a bolt of cloth. It was used as a hallmark to show the rest of the world the quality of this valuable commodity as it left London. In the mid-16th century, about 90% of all our exports were, were cloth. And London controlled between 75% to 80% of that trade. So it was extremely significant. And because it was so important, it was essential that it was controlled as tightly as possible. In the early 17th century, London became one of the world's leading trade centres. Cloth, spices and other commodities were sold. The East India Company was established. Workers flocked to the city from all over Europe, drawn to the goods, jobs and money that came with them. And more money in people's pockets meant the growth of entertainment and the theatre, such as the original Globe Theatre, home to playwright William Shakespeare. It was a good industry to get yes. into. Yes. When you think about in 1571, 72, yes. uh, money lending was made legal. Yes. Um, and all of a sudden, 1576, yes. the first purpose-built theater was built. But there's lots of theater building and uh, building going on in London in the 1570s. Yes. And I think it's related to, yes. to the new opportunities entrepreneurs had to yes. borrow money and yes. invest yes. it. Culture and wealth perpetuated growth and trade. And by 1800, London was the world's largest city and the capital of the British Empire. Why and when did the stock exchange start? The stock exchange started in 1801 as a regulated body, but before that, of course, for several hundred years, there had been trading in various types of stocks and shares. A lot of the bourses, as they were called on the continent, for various reasons uh, collapsed. And so a lot of the people who had, had been over there came over here. So it provided a, a focus for trading overseas. And yet London was heading for a fall. A century with two world wars and the Great Depression flattened the city's trading power. London stocks couldn't cope with the huge new container ships and the buying and selling of actual goods declined. It was only the advent of new technology at the end of the 20th century that saved the city's fortunes. There's now no actual dealing floor in the stock exchange. It's a virtual creature used by banks such as this. What is this, the state of health of the stock exchange way of business now? I think, it's, I think it's very healthy. Um, it goes through crises. It, it has fought off in the last 10 years. It has fought off a lot of uh, bids to take it over by European stock exchanges. But it's remained independent and it really has helped London to become the, well, to be, to remain the financial hub that it is. Tomorrow, our journey through London's history continues with a look at the capital's place on the world stage. <laughs>